but corporations have not yet won. Community still exists in small, tucked away areas not often talked about. Artists and businesses beginning to thrive in places thought to be defeated. Dave, I like to call him David Francis. And I, Tom Maslowski, are here to give you a glimpse of what's going down in downtown J-Town. We're going to be interviewing all of our favorite musicians, artists, and business owners that give every ounce of themselves into what they do. This is your host, Tom Maslowski, and with me as always is David J. Francis. Hello. How are you today, Dave? I'm doing wonderfully, Tom. How are we? Spectacular. I am grateful for you always running the sound, as I would have no idea how to do any of this. Tis my pleasure. Tis my pleasure. We are here tonight in our favorite studio, Third City Sound, above our favorite bar, Chicago Street Pub, which uh, it's kind of nice right now. There's an open mic night happening downstairs. Yeah, you can, uh, if you listen hard enough, you might hear the sweet, sweet sounds of Mr. Brian Motil. (laughs) You might. River Horse is currently on stage right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And with us up here tonight is Patrick Spiroff with his first song of the evening. Patrick, take her away. Please hold my hand, it's a rainy day. She turned inside and then just walked away. She could say it's a mother's coolest face. As a young boy, she'd always hold his hand. He liked it when she called him my little man. High school football star, then injuries and factory scars. Now a couple of scripts gets him back. Soon the monkey climbed on his back. The scripts ran out, so he turned to smack. Him and his girl, they didn't give a frack about anything But then his girlfriend, she got real sick They tried rehab, but it didn't stick He was out trying to get a fix when her folks buried her From whom he hadn't stole Just to maintain became his only goal Finally realized he was out of control When his mom knocking him He swore this time he'd kick it All his friends so proud of his six month jail Found with the needle still in his arm Just another one of 191 She's making money hands over fist Kick back the doctors when they write those scripts A sales rep life can be full of bliss just as long is it by him? Her mama called her down in Central Bay. Just some small talk, the news of the day. Did you hear about your cousin Ray? They said 
that he ordered What's up with kids these days? Just one of one, not a one It's a rainy day Listen to that sustain <laughs> I mean, it's crazy <laughs> I love my guitar That was awesome Thank you Go ahead, get your headphonics on there All set. Are you hearing us all right in there? Everything's great. Thanks for having me, Tom. Certainly, certainly. And Dave? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. And that was uh, a little treat for us, too. That was a brand new one, you said. Brand new one. It's about three weeks old. Um, It seemed like it was a pretty thorough, intense story. Is that a true story at all? It is a, basically, it was, I was hanging out at the back of uh, the White Horse Tavern on an open mic. It was the one that you hosted with uh, Kev, right? Oh, so I was hanging out in the back there, and I was overhearing this conversation, and it was like some late 20s kids, and they were kind of talking, and they were talking about coming back from their friend's funeral. And then, you know, and so I just kind of, as one would do, I just kind of jumped in the conversation. They were, and uh, just kind of found out that, yeah, the, the friend had OD'd. And uh, so that just kind of set the spark in my head. So then, so it's based on a true story, but all the facts are just made up. Hmm. So that was... Maybe a little bit of what's been going on. Yeah. But I mean, like, the true things about it is, like, uh, the song is called One of 191. So I looked up in uh, on, on the web, uh, <laughs> on the internets, um, looked up the statistics, and there's 191 heroin overdoses in um, Will County in 2016, which wow. I just thought was an insane number. I think yeah. it about doubles every year around here. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know, and it's just so crazy, and it's just so. It just kind of it just kind of moved me that you know I just kind of like man I did, just so just it just um just came became something I thought about so when I just kind of one day picked up the guitar and just kind of came up with that opening you know C chord with the G harmonic sure um as I do with a lot of songs sometimes the very first chords that I play will become a song. And that was an example of like that. Hmm. And it's just like, okay, that's, this is the story I want to tell. And cause that's kind of what I do. I, I must, I like what I try to do with my songs is just kind of tell stories. Absolutely. I, I, I would agree. Um, you don't hear a lot of throwaway lyrics or things like that in your songs. It's usually, you can hear a concise story being told from beginning to end. Yeah. And I think the audience likes to hear those kinds yeah. of things. And I, I personally enjoy hearing about the stories of the songs. Um, Colm O'Brien, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, he is a friend of ours from uh, like the, the Philadelphia area. Right, area. yeah, I know him. Um, I met him. Yeah, well, he was one of the first guys that really sat down and told lengthy stories. Right. You know, it was here, it was a night where there was nobody else in the room. It was about four people in the room, and uh, I attribute my taste to for Guinness. <laughs> he was telling this great story about, you know, 17 of his friends were on like 17, you know, pint number 17, and they were overlooking this bluff in this amazing bar writing these songs. I'm like, you know what? I, I think I want a Guinness right now. There like, you right go. Now. <laughs> but no, I, I, I do like the story aspect of songs. Yeah. It's cool. Um, a lot of my songs is basically, it will be like based on one true fact, and then I just kind of like expound upon it and create a story around it in a narrative a through narrative throughout the whole song like that one like it, it kind of i've had almost like a cinematic view where like the opening shot is the mother at the grave site of her dead son and then then it jumps to the beginning of his life and him growing up and then him falling and then it ends on a beach in saint tropez with the the drug rep who makes money by selling opiates to kids and getting them hooked and so that was the main influence for the rest of the story, I take it then? Yeah. Did you have any experiences in your own life where that was something that you wanted to write about, or was it just more uh, just topical? I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know what you mean by. Did you have some experience with somebody else in your life that got hooked on drugs that way to make you tell that lengthy story? It seemed like a pretty intense story for just kind of off the cuff. I didn't know if you maybe. They say knew someone that had gone through that. No, I mean, I, Tom's you know, getting super, super personal. No, it's not clear. Okay. Drawing from personal experience, any of the specifics of the song. No, 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 not at all. I mean, I've I've had friends that uh, gotten carried away, but they always managed to find their way back. Sure, sure. Um, so, but no, nobody that didn't find their way home. Okay. Um. When would be the first time you say that you played an open mic night here at Chicago Street Pub? Uh, it's been maybe about four years ago, I think. Um, and yeah, it was like, like I met Triz and I, I, yeah, it was like 2013. It was in 2013. It was like in March of 2013 because I just did, uh, I'd cut a, um, a just live in studio kind of EP. And so I kind of like gave him a copy of that. And then I started coming to open mics and, you know, try, just trying, because I heard this was a place that appreciated op- original music. And, you know, those places are so few and far between that it's like, okay, I definitely want to check this out. And then from the second I stepped in this, the doors here, I just loved it because it was just, it, it was like I found a community. I was playing open mics all the time in the city and going into the city and playing them. Um, but there's not, there's there's no sense of community there it's like there it's more like more cutthroat and here was like there was this whole big supportive community of of writers and and artists and just fun people and so i said gee i I really want to be part of that and so uh, and fortunately triz liked my songs and he started giving me some gigs and then i got those those third you know the residency um soon after that and i was because whoever had was doing the first Thursday of the month. It left, it, I think. And um, so I asked him, well, you know, I'd be glad to do it. I don't care if you pay me or not. And um, so I started doing those as solo, and I'd bring on friends to play guitar, and then I brought in a sax player for a while. And uh, that was just a really nice stretch. Uh, did that for uh, up until December. Yeah, the band that you put together currently is great. Uh, oh, <clears throat> you guys oh, work you. together very well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We're trying. We're trying. I you know, there's room for improvement, um, but you know, they're what how what is great is they're really nice guys. Um, so the chemistry is really good between all of us, and um, they seem to like the songs. They're kind of into the songs, so that obviously helps. <laughs> yeah, it was a very coherent version of all those songs playing with things. You know, I, I always see you play at open mic nights and things, right. and some you know we just put something together and get up there and just do some jamming. Right. So to hear your songs done the way they were supposed to be. It, just, it felt like they were um, very much at ease with just kind of making your song sound the best without trying to show off or right, make the right, song right, their right. own, you know. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's key to, you know, for any band, it's like you're, every every member of the band should be serving the song. That's what everybody's there to do. It's sure. not to show off their individual virtu- virtuosity. It's, you know, it's all about serving the song. and You serve the song and, and enjoy doing it, People will enjoy listening to it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And you, you said you discovered this place in 2013. Where where were you at before this? Are you well, from around here? Well, yeah, I, I uh, I've been living in Frankfurt uh, since '93. Okay. Uh, moved there from the city. Uh, my wife and I, when we decided to start a family, uh, we're living in a small apartment, so we decided to move out to the Burbs. Her brother lived in New Lenox, so we looked around, found a, like a starter home. And we wanted to start a family. So that's what brought me out to the area originally. But at that time, I wasn't playing guitar. I mean, uh, I had, had basically, when I got married and uh, started a family, I'd put away guitar and it's just, I wasn't writing, I wasn't doing anything. I was just focusing on career and stuff. And, um, but once my kids got to a certain age, I started um, playing guitar again and I wrote a song. And I thought, oh, well, you know, Maybe I'll uh, go to an open mic and check, you know, see if anybody likes it. And I'd had it. Now, prior to being married, I was in a band and I was, I was writing songs. But it basically, there's a, like a 10-year stretch where I just stopped playing. Wow. And then uh, picked it back up when, uh, when I 
when my girls got too old uh, to think it was cool to hang out with dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so I started writing a song and I was going up to N. Joe's. Uh, they had a Sunday night open mic and kind of got to know there. And it just. Was that at Tinley Park? Yeah, the one at Tinley Park. And um, had lots of fun. And so I just started writing like crazy, just writing a bunch of new material, just trying to impress the. Uh, open mic hosts and sure. like hey oh i got a new one you want to check it here like, what do you think of this one and it's just become infectious since then and then i heard about this place and then like i said since i came here and found this community it's been great yeah it's been uh, a real pleasure having you on board as well um what were you what were you doing before this how when when did you start playing guitar how did it well i started uh late teens okay very late teens uh self-taught um I knew a, I had a girlfriend at the time. She had an extra guitar. I want. I borrowed it from her. Um, we broke up. She asked for it back. I was got all upset. <laughs> I took the uh, two hundred and fifty dollars that I had, and I went out and bought an Epiphone. And uh, I, being self taught, I never like was good enough to um, play other people's songs. So it just became a natural inclination for me to start writing them, because. You know, I could at least play the song I wrote as sure. opposed to, you know, cover songs and stuff like that. And uh, then I just found that that's what I really, truly enjoyed was the act of creating and writing a song. That was the best part. Yeah, I think um, I was in the same boat with that, too, especially starting off when I was a teenager. I, I definitely wasn't good enough to play other people's songs. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and then when I went to college and I did a couple gigs there, you know, but I didn't couple open mics and coffee houses um and then after college and uh in uh then i formed a band when after i moved in the uh, 90s um after i moved to chicago and uh and whatever and then i stopped and did you guys play back. all over did you record a bunch of albums no 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 uh we recorded like three songs and oh. uh remember the place called weeds uh, I do not. Uh, it was on, it's on North Avenue, and um, what was great is there they had a like a Saturday night open mic, and if you played, you got to drink uh, f- beer, free beer for the rest of the night. Oh, that's so awesome! So it like drew a huge crowd of musicians, <laughs> and then all the musicians, and they had friends, and so it was just it was a really cool scene. Wow! And that's kind of where I'd met all the different bandmates, and it was it was a fun uh, band for a while. But then once, like I say, I got married and put that all behind me. Now, even at that time, were you also singing and songwriting? Yes. Yeah. 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 I've I've always I've never really, you know. I mean, I should take that back. I did play. Uh, I did do some covers and played some of these uh, crappy lounges, and I did like an, an entire act of, of cover songs. But I'd always throw one or two originals in. But uh, I've always just thought, uh, you know, I've always just wanted to do original songs, you know, because one, I figure I'm not that good of a guitarist. And two, I'm not uh, that good of a vocalist. So, but I like to think, you know, the five notes that I can hit, I can hit them with emotion. And um, so it's just, I figure it's best just to do original stuff. Yeah, I don't think it, um, I I struggle with that sometimes too. You know, am I as good as this person or that person? But uh, I, I think at the end of the day, even if I'm not or I am or whatever, it, it's about, I, I think the, the sharing of the emotions or the stories, and if, if you do it well, whether you're the best person or not, I don't I don't think that's the point, anyways. I mean, even the the musicians that like I that I have that you know you know Jaco Pastorius or John Coltrane, I don't listen to only those people. I listen to other things too. So I, I don't know it's hard as a musician to I don't know you're, you're you're constantly thinking about what other people think about you because you're always presenting things. Mm-hmm. And you're hoping for feedback, and you want it to be positive feedback, and sometimes you don't get any feedback at all. You know, you're left, yeah, you're left wondering, happens. is that a good thing, a bad <laughs> thing? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the worst is when you mess up, and you know you did a bad show, and then people are like, oh, it was a great show. And then you're just like, well, then you weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> or, or did you ever go back and listen to a show that you recorded that you thought was terrible and actually didn't turn out that bad, or that mistake you thought ruined the whole song? You can't even pinpoint right, it. Right, it's just a blip. Yeah, that does. Right. Yeah. Nobody notices it. Yeah, a couple times. And were you always taking the the, the the story 
aspect to your songwriting? Well, initially, you know, when I when I was uh, younger, especially in that time frame before I, I stopped writing, uh, it was always self-referential songs, right? So I was I was telling stories, but I was telling stories about myself. Hmm. But when I started uh, writing again after taking you know that break, um, I started delving. The first song that I came back with was just a whole cloth made up story, and then I just you know I've written a couple of self referential songs. I've written some love songs for my wife. I've written a bunch of songs about my daughters. Um, wrote a song about I've written a song about my father in law, um, but. Then the other aspect is I'll just take these little bits of real life and then create a story around them. So, and because it's like I got bored with myself, you know, you can only say so much about your own emotions, and it's like, okay, I said that already. Yeah. Now we'll do something more clever. <laughs> and I suppose that answers my original question too. Did that did that story manifest from the news or from politics? No, you just you straight up just made that story up. Hearing. Yeah. Well, I just took the fact of. You know, this young guy in New Lenox OD'd. Yeah. And then created this story around that. Because initially I'm like, wow, those people really told you like the whole story. You know, like <laughs> how long were you standing in line talking to them? You know? <laughs> no, no, just just, just the a, bare fact of that. I'm a brick wall sometimes. You have to forgive me. Yeah. And like this, the last song I was ho- hope to play is, is another kind of thing where I read about this uh, female gang member. And uh, she was an assassin. That was her job was to kill other people and they claim that and she's like 17 years old and oh, wow. um she killed they credited her with about 23 24 people and um she became so powerful and scary that her own gang knocked her off well huh. so i took that and i actually that's part of the song but then i built other lyrics around it and created so it's again kind of a story song what did you end up making that story about then after you elaborated and made it your own? The, the one I just described? Yeah. Um, well, it's just about, you know, how if you're growing up in a certain neighborhood in the south side of Chicago, um, your prospects aren't great and life kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really, really uplifting song. Yeah. <laughs> As all of them are. The, what I try to do is, like, have happy, bouncy melodies and the but i have a tendency to write dark stories underneath so it's like i try to k- keep it all upbeat so like if you're not really paying attention to the lyric you can just kind of bop your head and go oh this right. is great this is this is cool and you know and you catch a lyric here and there and it's fine but if you really listen to the full story i have a tendency to go dark i don't know why it's just a uh, it's like the yin yang of my personality it's like in real life i don't sit around and talk about boring you know depressing sad stuff but i find i write about it you know, I try to be happy-go-lucky and kind of a and personable get, person. That's how you expel the demons, right? You're well, right yeah, yeah and... you know, it's it's complimenting, you know, the yin-yang of, uh, yeah. of a person. Sure. It's always more interesting to have a yin and a yang than, you know, a yin and a yin, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the lyrics are happy and so is the melody. Well, that's far less common than people that write sad sounding music with happy lyrics that's not a, <laughs> yes. a very tapped market no it's not it's very <laughs> under uh utilized or under ex- exploited you're playing around you and the band yes, are doing yes. shows now you we're say- doing shows we're doing a show here on uh friday the good friday april 14th Make it a great Friday and come out and see Patrick Spear off play. There we go. <laughs> no <laughs> way. That, that was supposed to be Patrick's line. <laughs> no, totally he, that, that is my That is my tagline for that night. I thought he dared Tom to say it, and Tom was refusing. I thought I was in the middle of a standoff here, so I just jumped in with it. Sorry. You played middleman. I, you know. that, was, that was the best possible middleman you could have been. <laughs> very, very good. And I'm out. <laughs> Dave's contribution yeah, to the so, show. Yeah, we're still, you know, we're trying to get – trying to get gigs you know um that but that's the only one i have in the books right now all right all right well patrick do you have song number two ready for us uh yes i do all right okay we're gonna change it over real quick here let patrick get set up here that sound <laughs> that's pretty funny you had like 30 seconds to go 
And I was like, keep stretching it out. Keep oh. stretching it out. I didn't want to stretch it out, man. So I, I just... think that was, that, was the, that was the best possible way to end it right there. So I moved it over, but yeah. Okay, let's wrap it up. Patrick, take her away, buddy. Sure. It's called, the song is called Chirac. If a day is called a duty, you know tomorrow's out of town. He ain't worried about his future, some chance he'll be around. Living all that folding moment, come up just getting by. His mama lights a candle to pray it won't die. Soy over and over again Another wasted life One more pointless death On the south side of Chicago You know tomorrow's out of town South side of Chicago On the streets they call Shire She was 13 A low fly boy family Stacking stories Get a revenge No Jake could stop a spree No thought she was a hitter Carry a body Even the skull Even fly boy Start to fear her Be in peace She's made no more Chicago But no tomorrow's out of town The south side of Chicago On the streets they call Shire Did she know about the street life? Just a baby in a bed. Some shooters missing fury. No B day too, cause now she's dead. So on and on, same old story over and over again. Another wasted life. One more pointless death on the side. Tomorrow's out of town The south side of Chicago On the streets they call Shire The south side of Chicago But no tomorrow's out of town The south side of Chicago On the streets they call Shire Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. I'd like to say good night to all of our listeners, and thanks for all the new listeners that have been tapping in and following what's going on in our little music community down here. I'd like to thank David J. Francis for once again running the soundboard and always helping my, me always host my pleasure. this show. I'll talk more in the future. Right. Yeah, right. He always says that. And over this new setup, I'm trying to keep a lot of He's very shy. irons going in the fire. Um, I'd also like to thank Bill Aldrich that runs Third City Sound for letting us come up here week after week and get this show going. And, uh, of course, to Mr. Michael Trisna and Kathy Trisna for owning the best music venue in downtown Joliet. Mm, second. Chicago Street Pub. Second. What's that? Seconded. Seconded? I second that emotion. You're seconded. Patrick thirds it. This has been What's Going Down in Downtown J-Town. <laughs>